Um, welcome back. Uh, we are thr thrilled to be here judging week seven uh, perspectives. We are now officially over the halfway mark and after tonight we will be down to four challengers. Congratulations ladies for being in the top five. We know the briefs have been challenging at times, but we hope that they've been informative, educational and fun. Each week we must thank the judging panel because they volunteer their time to us. Uh, these five individuals have dedicated their time each week to the shooting range on a strictly volunteer basis while still running their own successful photography businesses and living through a pandemic just like the rest of us. Thank you, Tammy Darren of the Photographer Studio, Amy and Jenna Hobbs, the duo behind Hobbs Photography, Darlene Hildebrandt of uh, excuse me, of Digital Photo Mentor, and Leroy of Leroy Schultz for Photography. Your dedication to this project is so very appreciated and we wanna thank you very much for being here every week. Um, traditionally, people think that when they have questions on how to solve a problem or reach a goal, a personal coach is a good place to seek answers. Week seven's guest judge, John, um, John D. Gatsby has turned that idea on its head. As a behavioral interventionist, instead of asking his clients questions and offering them solutions, John asks intuitive questions that lead his clients to the answers they seek within. He draws rave reviews for his creative use of everything from illusion and storytelling to tarot and myth to make his esoteric interviews not just meaningful, but magical. Welcome, John. <clears throat> Today's cameras can do almost everything automatically. The one thing that they cannot do is to tell you where to stand, where to point your lens, and when to take the photograph. These are the sole responsibilities of the photographer, and it is the photographer who determines the viewpoint and perspective of the image he or she chooses to create. How you shoot a scene determines what kind of story you want to tell and what kind of mood you want viewers to feel when they look at your photo. It is about the angle of your camera, your proximity to your subjects, and everything you include in the frame plays an important role in the final image. John Constable once said, I never saw an ugly thing in my life, for let the form of an object be what it may, light, shade, and perspective will always make it beautiful. So tonight, we're gonna start off with the first slide which is a collage of all of the images um, and not their um, behind the scenes. We are gonna start off with our first critique this night and we'll move on to slide number two. This image was shot by Karen um, and is called A New Perspective. Karen, you were, you were the only one to do forced perspective this week. Have you tried forced perspective, sorry, forced perspective images before? Uh, was this challenge this week difficult to come up with a concept or were you, or were you brimming with ideas? Uh, I have not tried forced perspective before. This was a first for me. Um, I thought it was something that was fun to try to do. I came up with quite a number of ideas and found out they weren't always as easy to do as I thought they would maybe be, but, um, but yeah, I thought this had an element of fun to it. And of course, the forced perspective made it a bit of a, um, you know, a bit of a fantasy type photo. Thank you. John, forced perspective photography is when the photographer intentionally manipulates the perspective of the image. You can make your models look like they're propping up buildings or they look like they're holding up the sun or the moon like a marble. How well did the did Karen force the perspective of this image? And do you have any advice? Um, I thought, yeah, I thought she did a good job. Um, I didn't, I didn't really have any advice. It, uh, it, it kind of looks like a like a giant camera. Um, you know, any advice I'd I'd have would be is beyond my kind of photography experience. I looked at it, and it, uh, yeah, I thought it did a really great job. Uh, you had, sorry, you had said um, that you liked 
how the image highlighted the convenience of a modern age hiding in plain sight. Can you go into that a little bit more? Yeah, um, I think that like with the challenge being looking at things differently and then being able to sort of um, uh, that it kind of reminds us of, of uh, you know, taking photography or taking photographs in the past and how difficult it is. And I just, the more I looked at the image, the more I kept thinking about how much um, work taking a, ph a photograph is even, even 10 or 20 years ago. And so it's, you know, this, um, the, the convenience is, is that, you know, we're able to, uh, with, you know, our cell phones, uh, take a snap of a picture and then, uh, you know, throw a filter on it and uh, pop it up on Instagram. And, and that's like hours of work, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And so I just think that uh, something about it really kind of pulled me in. And I, I, I found myself thinking a lot about it, which I really liked. Thank you, John. Tammy, to add a sense of size into a photograph, it often helps to incorporate something that's known, that's a known size to the viewer to show how big or small the object is. This technique is often used in photography by photographing a person next to you, a huge waterfall or mountain to show how big the object actually is. Could the photographer have added anything to their own image to convey the entire scene more clearly? Or do you feel the image stands solid on its own? Um. This one I, I kind of struggled with because I was trying to figure out the perspective of the cameras to the person that's standing. Um, I don't know if I could be wrong here, but I just felt like that that was a bit off. Sure. For me. Can uh, you hear me? No, you, uh, you totally um, went out there. Okay. Maybe Did ask someone else then. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to try again? Am I back? Okay. Yeah, you're back now. Okay. Uh, I don't know what part you had now. Um, I missed yeah. the whole thing. So, okay. Um, for this one, I did. I, I mean, I, I might be off myself because um, this one I struggled with the perspective a little bit. Um, I wasn't, uh, I felt like the person on the left here might have been, I don't know, the height was off for me. I feel like she should have been um, farther back. I don't know. The, it's just, I, I, I'm not really a good one to ask on this one because this one I struggled a lot with, but um, there was some critique things I had, but that wasn't the question you asked me. Oh, do you want to add the crit your critiques to it right now then? Sure. So um, other than my struggle with trying to figure out if that was a correct perspective or not, um, I did think that um, the the photoshopping of the little boy here could have gone a little better because it it's it's not really clear that he's holding on to the camera he's doing something behind it right and then the lighting and a little bit of the focus was off but um as far as the perspective goes i mean i guess it's all right but there's something off and i can't put my finger on it and that's why i'm struggling to come up with an answer okay um darlene do you want to weigh in on the question that i asked tammy i can could you repeat the question Yes. Um, could the photographer have done, added anything to their image to convey the entire scene more clearly? Or do you feel that the image stands solid on its own? I think the, the message comes across, okay, it's a giant camera, like, like you said. Um, but it reminds me of, you know, like when we were kids, it's like, I'm crushing your head, right? That, that thing where you see somebody far away and their head is tiny. So I think Maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, Tammy, I would have liked to have seen the model, the lady, really small, like put her way in the background so that all the pieces are like way out of whack. So you've got a teeny tiny person with a medium sized photographer and a big giant camera or something like that. And you could have done that with, with one shot just by moving her further away from the camera, like towards that hill or something. So I think the message is there, but it just needed some slight refinements. All right, thank you. Um, we'll move on to slide number three, please. This image is done by Rain um, and it is Urban Whirlpool. Rain, in week three, the judges started asking for title and artist statement with the images. You wrote a very interesting backstory on your inspirations for this image. 
without the opportunity to explain your inspiration for this challenge, do you think you would have chosen a different subject? I'm not sure if I would have chosen something different, honestly, because I think I was actually playing around with having a very, very brief statement. And after kind of redoing it a couple of times, I decided to just share some of the key points of the perspective shot from kind of my personal perspective of it as well to see, like, I just felt like ultimately it added to this piece, but I'm not sure I would have changed um, my image. I did try some other images and it was like uh, the, the judges were saying last week, um, if it was a choice between too little or too much, uh, I chose the, the towards the lesser with this image in comparison to my other options. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. It does, thank you. Uh, Hobbs, <clears throat> when you learn to see things and capture images from a totally different perspective, you can produce some really interesting, beautiful, and sometimes powerful images that will draw the viewer's eye into the photo. Could Rain have done anything more to elevate this image to the next level? And what advice can you impart on her to help her bring perspective to this image? It's always a big surprise who's going to go first, Jenna. <laughs> um, I think I completely agree that as a photographer, it is our job to not stand five feet away from somebody standing straight up and take their photograph. Like that's what people around us see. Um, in order to create photos, we need to see things differently. It's our job. Um, so taking ordinary things and seeing them in a different way, seeing the beauty in them um, is a skill. Uh, I appreciated this image because the photographer was doing that. They were looking at things differently. Um, their behind the scenes was more the typical of the parkade. I've never been here. I know it's in Edmonton. I've seen it in wedding photos often. Um, and she said that she looked up and saw it differently. Um, secondly, I appreciated it because when I first saw it, I didn't know it was a parkade. Uh, you know, I had to take a second to look at it. The, you know, certain parts of it gave it away. But at first glance, you know, it's not like when you see the shot looking straight at it. It's, it's a parkade. It's obvious. You have to look at it, um, figure out what it is, which I, you know, I did figure out, but it took me a second, which, which I can appreciate. Um, and sometimes when you're using those different perspectives, uh, it can create something symmetrical and beautiful such as this. Thank you. Amy, did um, you have anything to add? Chip in for, if I can chip in for one second. I agree with Jenna. I, my kids are super into, I think they're called spirographs. Yeah. The thing where you go round and round with the pen. So my first thought was that just because I've been seeing it a lot. I agree with Jenna that this, I didn't look at this and immediately think parkade. The thing that I do think could improve this image is that when you have overall, it's quite symmetric, like very symmetrical. And that is the simplistic beauty of it. And then it's the inconsistency in the edges, which when we look at the world, we have a focal point and we don't, our brain doesn't see every detail all the time. But again, as a photographer, just start to learn to watch your edges. So there isn't inconsistencies in the edges of your images is a something I think could have upped the ante a little bit for this, but I still really love this. Thank you. Leroy, in reading the judges' critiques this week, there wasn't technically a lot to complain about this image. How could you, um, sorry, but how could using a different lens or depth of field or shooting at a different time of day have taken this image to the next level? Um, well, first of all, I just wanna say that uh, this image stood out to me right away because, um, Right after high school, when I first got into photography, um, I took a friend of mine to this parkade and we shot straight down, right? I mean, like everyone shoots this this parkade and it's changed. Um, it didn't have all of these, I don't know, are those cables or something that's 
that are in place now that was that wasn't there before. So I mean, this takes me back. You know, there's just like this vortex of time travel happening for me, where um, you know I I know this spot and I you know I knew it like 30 years ago. Um, so that was the first thing. Um, how he could have been done better. I mean, I I think it it stands on its own really well. Um, certainly, like different time of day would have possibly given some different lighting effects, some more shadowing, maybe would have given it a certain dimensionality. Um, I don't think I would have chosen a different focal length um, because, you know, the the circles are are intact. They're not, you know, they're not distorted. They're not warped. I think, I don't think that would be a consideration for me at all. I, I like how it looks like this. Um, depth of field, yeah, it could have been, uh, it may have been interesting to focus on the, on the cables that you see there and just really play on on that geometry and and bring it in but you know that would just be like okay how can I make this already excellent image better and you know it might just be a, a pursuit um, that just takes you right back to to this image uh, which I think is is a brilliant image thank you Leroy uh, we can move on to slide number four hope this one is done by Angela and it's called silky smoke Angela, you were one of the challengers who tried several different ideas this week. Can you, sorry, can you describe what your ideas were and explain why you chose this one over the others? Well, this was kind of my last swing at the bat or whatever, if you want to call it. Um, I was actually throughout the week, I was trying the, uh, like the displays with the miniatures. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I was kind of set on that, but everything I tried, I just did not like. And then literally on Sunday afternoon, I ran to the dollar store and grabbed incense and thought I was gonna try this. So this, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Leroy, there are several, sorry, there are several techniques you can use to get the feel of a three-dimensional scene. One of them is light and shadow, light illuminates while the shadows define. Did Angela use light and shadow to their advantage? And what advice would you give to her that would bring this image to the next level? Yeah, I think, uh, I think she sure did. When I look at this, um, you know, right away, I'm, I'm reminded um, of x-rays, right? Where, where you have like a, a three-dimensionality that, that's occurring. Um, and, and you're seeing that in these, in these layers of this smoke. Um, and I like the fact that it's colored. Um, you know, I, I think it would be a little difficult for me to pick apart something that I would do differently because I think it, it stands well on its own. Uh, maybe at the very bottom, there's that very bright spot that just kind of hovers on its own. You know, I might, um, I might look at eliminating that or maybe just taking like um, your curves or, or bringing out the, the highlights just to um, make it slightly more vivid. Um, but, you know, just like my comments with uh, Rain's image, you know, we're, we're kind of slicing, uh, splitting hairs here, uh, ironically, given my hairstyle. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, it was a great effort. Thank you, Leroy. Darlene. Since photography is two-dimensional platform, all images are simply illusions of a three-dimensional scene. What this means is that photography is all about recreating a three-dimensional world in a flat two-dimensional image. This is accomplished by using depth and scale to give photographs a sense of perspective. Does this image accomplish, accomplish that feeling of being transformed into a three-dimensional scene? Would you change anything about the perspective that this image was shot in? I think it does really well. I'm just looking at my, uh, on a bigger monitor. Um, I looked at all of the images, like zoomed in and looked for sharpness and everything else. And honestly, I didn't even care if the smoke is sharp, like the little tip of the incense is sharp um, and the rest is just sort of very mystical. So it works on that level of, you know that instinctively that there's some bits that are closer to the camera because they're they're illuminated more, they're brighter, uh, and, and it does give that illusion. But it's a very abstract kind of image. It's very um, it's graphically interesting. You know, like it pulls you in, 
And I agree with Leroy. I would either um, get rid of that that thing at the bottom, the bright little red tip of the incense, or just darken it a bit so it doesn't draw the eye. I would I would probably leave it and just tone it down so it keeps you sort of bouncing back and forth between them. But I love the play in, of the light and the shape of this one. And um, I'm curious, Angela, did you read the article on my website on how to do this? I actually did not. <laughs> There is one and it looks exactly like this. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> I'll have to go back and look. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Hope, let's move on to slide number five, please. This image is done by Shalene and it's wine and roses. Shalene, this image has a very interesting concept with the idea of um, visually nested wine glasses. And you decorated your scene with roses. What influenced your decision to include flowers in your image this week? Uh, it was just an accident, actually. I was, um, after playing with all those other ideas I, I had worked on, I had all my wine glasses sitting out to get put away. And there was this little uh, jar of roses that we had left over from something else that we were using. And I just kind of plunked one into the glass and lined it up and kind of noticed that it looked good in the glass. But then it's like, why would the rose be in the wine glass? Let's put wine in the wine glass. But the rose was such an attractive, uh, like an addition to the picture that I thought having some other colors that maybe went with the type of wine that you put in there might kind of bring a little bit more uh, interest to the picture. Thank you. Tammy, initially the eye might perceive a photograph as a whole but after a fraction of a second, its focus narrows to initiate a journey through the image, moving from one part of the frame to others, unless something grabs its attention. Compositionally, sometimes you can make this journey easy for the eye or you can force it into a different pattern. How does your eye move through looking over this image and what makes it work or not work for you? So, this one, uh, right away, uh, when I pulled it up, uh, the roses were the focus for me. And so I did question um, in my comments on the judges card um, why the roses were included. I think this would have stood alone really well without the roses. Um, the other thing I, I think would have made these stand out a lot nicer was just a bit better backlighting. It's quite, um, it's quite dark. So it feels like the tops of the cups are kind of fading into that backdrop a little bit. I think if it was crisper, it would have popped and stood out a lot nicer. So that was uh, one of my critiques. Um, yeah. Thank you, Tammy. Hobbs, you've been asking for storytelling in images every week. In the perspectives challenge, storytelling wasn't a priority. So as creating, um, wasn't a priority, so as creating an interesting viewpoint. If the roses were going to be included as part of the story, how could um, Shalene have used them more effectively to tell it? Either one of you. <laughs> hmm. Well, for the I roses especially, let Avery I... go. <laughs> okay. Um, personally, <laughs> I don't feel like the roses currently add anything to a storyline. And yes, I am craving like a good storytelling photograph, but this photo, I, to me, I don't have a mental picture of what you could do with the roses to make it more of a storytelling image. But for this photo specifically, what I said to Jenna when we were going over these on Monday was I wish the bottom half didn't exist because the top half of this image I really like when I look at the top half I think that's cool like what is that I like that it makes me question but then it's like how that like where do I buy that wine glass <laughs> but then I go to the bottom and I'm like oh there's three stems and two roses and that sense of kind of mystery and perspective is gone for me and so the top half of this I really like um the bottom half like the three wine stem the three bases of the wine glasses um 
and then the roses are just drawing attention to that. So it's like, I do think detail is really important in images, but really asking yourself if that detail is enhancing what you're hoping to tell someone. Thank you. Jen, I, I did you want to add that anything? I hadn't myself, but I did. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I mean, it's hard for an image like this to think storytelling, how could I make it? Um, and so forcing it maybe some lipstick on the wine glass, um, the roses instead of so placed so nicely, maybe they could be ripped into pieces just to let your mind, you know, wander and think what story is there. I see that. Thank you. Um, slide number six, please hope. This one is done by Corey Lynn and it's called Namaste. Corey Lynn, you had many struggles this week editing down your choices. Like others, you tried several con concepts before getting this shot. If you had the opportunity to reshoot your concepts this week, what advice would you give yourself? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, being more open to pulling some different lenses out of my bag. I did this week. I, I actually, I used a macro lens. I did some stuff with my 24 to 70, which is my nemesis lens. I don't like that lens for whatever reason on my camera. And then I settled in with my 70 to 200 because it's my favorite always. Um, I was really, it's so funny because this image for me is quite simple, but I was really focused on a ton of detail this week. And so I think I was struggling with getting all the details where I needed them to be and the other ideas that I had. And I just couldn't seem to get there. So it's funny. I thought it was very fitting that I ended up in such a calm, serene space in the middle of a dirt road in a mud puddle because that's <laughs> kind of how my whole weekend was going. So. <laughs> Thank you. Darlene, changing your perspective can be as easy as shooting from a low level and straight on, shooting upward to tall scenery like trees or cityscapes into a, um, into a backdrop, including reflections to give additional depth. Do you enjoy the perspective of this image? And if you were able to mentor through this shot, what advice would you have given? I love this image. Um, I got a chuckle out of the frog again. I'm assuming it was the same frog or, or his brother that was, in frog. Egg, <laughs> that was in the egg. <laughs> um, this guy's obviously having a better day because he's not getting eaten. Uh, the colors, like for me, the colors are great. Um, minor minor little things because I love the perspective so if I was coaching on this image the only minor thing that I, I noticed would be that the frog's head is missing in the reflection so possibly just by you know positioning yourself a tiny bit higher or to the left or the right or positioning him a little bit to get the full reflection in the puddle and then that I was just playing with cropping on it because that very bright spot at the top really takes my eye away from him. So even just cropping a little bit from the top um, and making it sort of more like, I love that front bokeh, like the foreground bokeh. And I wanna see more of that and less of that bright highlight in the background. But overall, um, I really enjoyed this image. I think it was well done and the perspective is bang on. Thank you, Darlene. Thank John, you. this image was shot in Alberta during the winter. Do you think Corey Lynn did an effective job at tricking you into feeling that this was a warm and serene moment? Um, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm kind of curious as to whether or not that, like, is that, um, uh, like, whether or not the lighting, like, if I, if from a different angle, if, if you would see um, the snow or, or something, because, yeah, no, it definitely looks very warm. Thank you. 
Um, so that's all of our critiques tonight. I do have a few uh, or a couple questions for um, the judges and I'm good because we have some time, I'll give you guys some opportunity to um, add to the critiques this evening. Um, but I'm gonna start with uh, John. You're not a photographer, but you, no. specialize, <laughs> but you specialize in helping people find new ways of looking at challenges. In your comments, you mentioned that you have seen a few of these perspectives and subjects before. How would you have coached the shooters into finding other perspectives that perhaps even they hadn't considered? Oh, geez. <laughs> Those are hard questions. Uh, Sorry. Man. <laughs> um, hmm, how would I do that? Um, well, I think I think a big part about that is is just the uh, uh, emotional management. So I think that uh, the easiest way to see a new perspective is is to uh, try to pay really close attention to like where your emotions are, uh, and the more that you can kind of get into a youthful, playful uh, place in your own mind, um, the easier it is to kind of take that different angle. So when you're um, if you think back to being a little kid and and you can imagine you know playing with little figurines and and all of a sudden the couch is a mountainside and you know, the fridge is uh, another world. Um, so I think getting into like a really playful state um, and uh, things that help, you know, physiologically, you know, you can like jump up and down, get the heart rate uh, going, make sure you have a snack. And uh, <laughs> and also, you know, if there's images or things like, you know, music or, um, uh, or specific, uh, um, you know, sometimes I might watch a short uh, TED talk or something that just kind of gets me into that space. So, um, you know, and then uh, when all else fails, you can stand upside down on your head and uh, imagine the world is inversed and what that might be like and go from there. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. Judges, often you don't need a fancy camera or uh, a bunch of expensive lenses to create different perspectives. What you need is creativity and the ability to move around. Do you think that the perspective that the photographer shot added a layer to the story or took away from it? You can just raise your hand if you want to chime in. No judges want to chime in. Oh, ladies, did you do a good job this week? They don't got much to say. <laughs> I'd like to propose that John answer that again. <laughs> Um, I think I think all the submissions this week were 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 great. I think it um, it was on target for uh, you know the sort of things that we wanted to see. There was, I think I said in my comments that it was nice to see a, a nice range of ideas represented. Um, where I think um, going back, it, it might have been the the first or second week. You know, a lot of the subject matter seemed to be similar. Where you know this time there was a lot of range and what we were seeing and you know we have shots looking up we have shots down on the ground we have you know the forced perspective i mean it was I, I think um everyone did a good job this week thank you judges do you have any advice or um additional critiques that you want to give the images this week darlene please uh, yes um my kitty helps too uh, on regards to the parking lot image, um, yeah. I actually played around with converting it to black and white and adding a bunch of contrast because the thing for me that I found was that there wasn't a lot of light contrast between the different levels and I was looking for sort of some separation. So go back and play around with, with that. Um, I just did a conversion in, in Lightroom and then pulled some of the colors and I got, I got some of the levels to be darker. But you mentioned earlier, you know, maybe time of day, like if you were shooting it, um, like night photographers, so keep this in mind for next week, guys. So this is a tip for you all for next week. If you're doing night photography and you want the sky to be blue, don't shoot at night, shoot right after sunset. Right, so if you've heard that term blue hour, you get sunset, so the sun goes down, and then just after that, um, I can even tell you what time blue hour is right now, will be blue hour. So you'll have that time period, and instead of having that sort of black hole at the top, you'd have a color, right? Um, and maybe then have some city lights on, like, or some lights coming in. So time of day might have made a difference if like the sun was coming in and beaming down into one spot something like that, but 
you know, uh-huh. you didn't know that unless you sat there all day, right? So I have to tell you, I was totally going for blue hour, but it took like so long to get my whole family in the van. I was like, come on. You guys. But I, yeah, I love that. Family I love fail. That hearing about that last time. Family fail. That's it. <laughs> Um, the wine glass I was going to comment on as well, because um, I didn't even think of what Amy said to, or Jenna said, um, you've got the same names, Amy said it, um, about cutting off the bottom, because once I, I did that on Lightroom as well, and once you just see the, the glasses, it's totally a different shot and it's more abstract, like she said, right? And if you want to do like lighting of glassware, um you can do it in a light table but it's really tricky and there's two ways to light glassware you either need to do it on a white background and you light the background and then you use black cards on the sides or you light it on a black background and you light cards that then reflect in to fill the edges like you never light glassware directly so shining the the ring light onto it makes those highlights in the middle that are really hard to get rid of um if you search my website, I have an article on that too. So um, just go search digital photo mentor, search for glassware and Angela has to search for smoke, but you basically pulled off the smoke exactly the way he outlined it. So that's Thank my, you, Darlene. That's my comment. Leroy. Yeah, can we see the, uh, the wine glass image again? Hope, can you bring that up please? So the first thing I wanna say is Come on, ladies. Wine and roses go together, don't they? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think so. Like, you know, like, I totally to me, to, so. to, to me okay. it did not it's seem okay. out of place. <laughs> Thank you so much for saying, because I really felt okay. that it went together too. Yeah, I appreciate so, that. <laughs> okay, so a, a couple of things. I like um, the fact that when I'm looking at this, and you know, I think I'm going to go against the grain with the other judges. Um, I'm seeing a triangle shape. Right. If you take the, the colors away from the roses and the wine, you essentially have more or less a black and white image. You add those colors in and all of a sudden we have this this really nice geometry happening here, which is sort of a triangle of the wine. And then almost in, in, in a perfect uh, triangle, more or less, you have the two roses that are you know creating sort of that triangular base. Then you have the, the rounded edges of the wine glasses and the um, slightly off horizontal line of, of the wine. So I'm going to go against the grain and say that I thought the, the wine um, or the, the roses add to, to this. Um, I mean, there are a few things like the, the background looks a little, a little gray, a little dirty versus, you know, I would want to see either more shadows or fewer shadows. I would probably go with fewer shadows here. And then it looks like there's a little uh, leaf from the stem or something on the rose on the right. You know, I would want to see that uh, taken away. Um, you know, so I, I think I, I like this image um, a lot um, and maybe more than, than some of the other uh, judges, but you know, wine and roses to me, they go together. Um, and I, and I do like the, the sort of um, different levels of geometry that are happening here. I just want to say the first thing I thought of was like the nesting petals of the roses with the nesting petals of the wine glasses popped out to me right away. So I might be on team Leroy this week. And I just wanted to mention that I think it was Amy that said, if you're going to use flowers, use real flowers. So well done. <laughs> And, and I believe Shaleen talked about that being uh, her having to go to the flower shop this week, so. Well, we accept all used flower donations from photo props. <laughs> um, um, I also wanted to say one thing is that I really, for everybody, I, Leroy touched on it earlier, but seeing the variety this week was just made me happy. Um, you know, I can see people are really putting a lot of effort into that thinking process before they're shooting and the, it makes the procrastinator in my heart happy that, because, <laughs> um, often there's a lot of finicky stuff for executing an image, but it's all the thought process that goes into what you want to create. That's such a huge effort. And I can really see that that is happening. And also Rain, Jenna and I have also missed both golden hour and blue hour from kid bloating 
extravaganzas. So we understand that. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, if there isn't any more um, critiques at, at this time, uh, we are going to move on to, you know, the nitty gritty part of the evening. So without further ado, we will announce the winner of this week. Angela and Rain, we should let you both know that there was an eight point difference between the two of you between first and second place this week. Um, the judges really enjoyed both of your submissions. Um, so our sharpshooter for this week for week seven perspectives is Rain. Congratulations, the judges really enjoyed your image this week from the symmetry and the attention to detail. So congratu congratulations and a job well done this weekend. Good job, Rain. Um, uh, sorry, I just lost my place here. Um, Rain, John has kindly provided a very interesting prize this week to you as our winner. John, can you please tell Rain what she has won this week? <laughs> Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, so I do sort of like one-to-one -one consulting and um, it's kind of a combination of a bunch of things, but uh, a big part of it is a tarot reading. So, um, and I also, uh, I kind of have some hypnosis and so kind of either one of those two things. And uh, yeah, it's a 60 minute session. We just sit down and uh, chat about what's going on in your life and what you might like to uh, see come into your life. Well, thank you, that's exciting. Awesome. Yeah, i am been looking into that myself there, John. I saw your website and I was in, in, intrigued by what you have to offer. Fantastic. <laughs> um, Angela, oh, you have, oh sorry, go ahead. On, on that note, I should, um, uh, I should say that I've been having some, uh, just some contact issues on my website. So um, the, uh, the email is correct, but the um, email form that you would fill out is not working. So I don't know what you've been provided for in terms of contact, but uh, I can make sure to, to pass on my, my email appropriately and get a hold of me that way. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay. I can make sure that that happens. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Hope. Uh, Angela, you impressed the judges this, this week with your silky smoke shot, and it was just shy of first place. So nicely done this week. You are in second. Thank you. In third place, Corey Lynn, the light and bokeh of this image was well received by all of the judges this week. Um, thank you for your solid submission this week. Thank you. You're welcome. And now for the not so fun part of the evening. Each week we have to eliminate one competitor. And as the weeks go by, it's getting harder and harder to say goodbye. Karen, this week you dared to force your perspective the judges thought it was a great idea and even cool they were hoping for a little bit more attention to detail Shalene, the judges thought your idea was unique and interesting but thought elements of your image could have been removed and others added so this week the shooter emptying their clip and leaving the firing line is karen karen it has been such a pleasure having you in this competition. Your engagement in the group and your support of other challengers has been heartwarming and refreshing. Thank you so much for being with us and we hope that you had fun and we hope that we helped give you new perspective into your photography. We hope to see you cheering the rest of the competitors on from here on out. Did you wanna say anything? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's been a slice. It's been good to meet everybody uh, long distance, and uh, it's been a good learning experience. And I'm just gonna keep on learning. And uh, I've got some uh, things already shot for this next week, so I'll share them share them on the group page for the fun of it. And I'm gonna keep following you guys. It's, it's great. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here. Heart back to you, Karen. John. Uh, we want to thank you so much for being with us this week. Your insights on perspective has been invaluable, and I'm sure the challengers, excuse me, the challengers will enjoy your critiques this week. I sure did. Um, you are so generous for providing the prize this week, so thank you so much. 
Well, my pleasure. Um, thank you. Uh, challengers, judges, thank you for being here and giving it your, your all each and every week. We will see you again next week for a shot in the dark with our guest judge, Stephen Lee. So it's have a good night, everybody. And um, if you have any questions, you know, in the groups, we can answer those for you. Um, and we hope to see you all there. And uh, challengers, you'll be getting your summaries uh, this evening. Right, Hope? Yeah, and I'm just reminding you all that I want you to sell us a mirror in the group because yeah. I would see your mirror to Hannah. That means you. Anyway. Yeah, I'm still waiting for a llama photograph, seriously. But, you know, a mirror one, I can do with you selling me a mirror. I only ask. I'll send you the day. llama one in your, in your private messages. I finally. I I would very much appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, thanks for a good night. We're out of here, you know, a little bit early on time. <laughs> um, if you guys have any questions, just ask it in the group and we will uh, we'll get that answered for you. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks, John. Have a good night. Hello photographers, Stephen here with Stephen Lee Photography. Yeah, congratulations to week eight of the challenge. So the theme for this challenge is gonna be low light. So things you might wanna consider, types of photos you might wanna be taking are things like night cityscape, long exposure at night, the night sky or astrophotography, light painting. If you wanna do some photos indoors, you can do them indoors, just turn off all the lights. Maybe play with candles, play with, um, have one or two lamps turned on or light sources, play with sparklers. So yeah, so those are just some ideas of types of photos you could take for this challenge. Now, when it comes to low light photography, it adds another difficulty uh, level to, your, to taking that photo. So some of the tips that I would uh, want to give you to kind of help you out with this challenge are, make sure you're bumping up your ISO, right? to make sure that um, your, your exposure is proper during low light. Make sure your shutter speed is, um, is not too slow that it's gonna cause blur or use a tripod um, and make sure that you have proper focus. So for the judges, some of the things that we're gonna be looking at are composition. So how you're composing your images, making sure the image is sharp, how technical of a photo um, that, you, that you've taken, um, the creativity of the photo, and also your use of light and shadow. So yeah, your images are due Sunday, February 28th at 7 p.m. So yeah, good luck with this challenge. Bye.